All right, use Euler's method with a step size of 0.2. So they're giving us that automatically to estimate y of 1. So that's what we're trying to get to. We're trying to get to where y, I'm sorry, we're trying to get to the y value when x is 1, where y of x is the solution to the initial value problem dy dx equals x plus y and y of 0 equals 1. Okay, so what is your starting point? 0, 1. Okay, so we're starting with 0, 1, or y of 0 equals 1. Harry? Okay. All right, so your next, if the step size is 0.2, then the next y value would be y of 0.2. If we're going to move 0.2 to the right, then we're looking for the next y value, which would be y of 0.2. Okay, so we're going to use the formula. The previous y value. So the previous y value would have been the y value when x was 0. What's that? 1. Plus the step size is 0.2. And then the slope at the previous point. Well, my slope formula is x plus y, and the previous point was 0, y. So what's the slope? 1. Wait, why are you doing y of 0.2 We are trying to find y of 1, but I can only move 0.2 each time. Right. So it's going to take me, how many times am I going to have to do this? 5. Right. There's no shortcut. The good news, though, is that on the AP exam, I've never seen them make you do more than three steps. But this first one, I want to make you do a bunch so that you just really get the formula down. All right, now, after you find, all right, now, also, I always forget this. Does y of 0.2 actually equal 1.2, or is this an estimate? It's an estimate. So y of 0.2 is approximately, so you need to use the squiggly lines. Now. I can put an equal sign between 1 plus 0.2 times 1 and 1.2 because those two things equal each other. All right. I also think it's helpful to write the points that you've just found out to the side. All right. Now, if I go over another 0.2, then what's my new x value? 0.4. So y of 0.4 is approximately the previous y value, which is 1.2 plus the step size is 0.2, and then the slope at the previous point. And slope is x plus y for this problem, so 1.4. Okay. So I can't, I can't go straight to estimating y of 1. I have to take each step. All right, so this new point is 0.4, comma, 1.48. All right, so y of 0.6 will be approximately, the previous y value was 1.48 plus the previous, or plus the step size, and then the slope at 0.4 comma 1.48 is 1.88. Okay, y of 0.6 is actually 1.856. We got two more. Okay, fill in y of 0.8. All right, so y of 0.8 is 1.856 plus 0.2 times 2.456. Is that what you would get if you add 0.6 to 1.856? And then that actually equals 2.3472. In terms of the squiggly guys, you really need equal sign on the second one because this, what's in the middle and what's on the end do exactly equal each other. Well, our final goal is to 
figure out what y of 1 approximately equals. And we get 2.97664. So the way you write your final answer is y of 1 is approximately 2.977. All right, so since they don't make you do more than two steps, I'm going to modify number three. I want to estimate, I'm going to use Euler's method with the step size of 0.5 to estimate y of 2. Okay. All right, I want you to try this on your own. Get your calculators out. I want an approximation of y of 2 accurate to three decimal places. You can work together if you would like. Okay, so they gave us that the starting point is 1, 0. If my step size is 0.5, then my first y value would be y of 1.5. I got 1.5 because I'm starting at x equal 1, and the step size is 0. 0.5. So 1 plus 0. 0.5 is 1.5. You're probably going to need a calculator on the second one, second step. On number three, that is a differential equation that we can solve. So what I want to do is I want to actually solve that differential equation, and then we're going to use that answer to see how close our approximation is. All right, so can you all solve this differential equation on your own? Okay. Yeah, you can. Solve the differential equation on your own. Separate your variables. Okay, so you're solving the differential equation, meaning you're separating the variables and then you're going to integrate. I'm going to work it with you, but I'd like for you to try and work it on your own. Don't cheat. have to solve for C. Yes. Because the derivative of the bottom, the derivative of 1 minus y, is negative 1 dy dx. So in order to use a natural log integration, I need for whatever's on the bottom, I need the derivative of that on top. I want you to solve the differential equation without the calculator. And then we'll use the calculator to actually find y of 2. Yeah, 
you should be able to solve for C without the calculator. Okay, after I find C, all I, wanted, all I really wanted you to do was to solve the differential equation. So we found C. You're welcome to use this one right here. Just plug the square root of E back in for your C. Or E, the square root of E is E to the 1 half. So I have E to a power times E to a power. I can add the two exponents, and that's where I got this one right here. All right, so now using this equation, I want you to find Y of 2. So in your calculator find y of 2. Okay, I got 0.777. Are you plugging a 2 in for the x? So you do 1 minus e all to the negative 1 half times 4 plus 1 half? Okay, so the actual value of y of 2 is 0.777. And because this was actually a separable differential equation that I could solve, I'm able to find that. But most of the differential equations that you're going to get with Euler's method, you're not going to be able to solve them. And so we're not really digressing. I've just opened up a new way to approximate y values when you can't solve the differential equation. So our approximation was 0.875. The actual value is 0.777. That's kind of close. We're about a tenth off. But what's the step size here? 0.5, really in the grand scheme of things, 0.5 is a big chunk of having, and if I had used like a step size of 0.1, then my estimate would have been a heck of a lot closer to 0.777.